On H17, there are two other types of muscle tissue in the body. Besides skeletal muscle, there is visceral smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. So we want to tell you a little bit about them and how they are similar and how they are different from skeletal muscle. Obviously, skeletal muscle is called that because the muscle is attached to our bones, our skeleton. So let's start with visceral smooth <coughs> muscle. It's called visceral because a visceral means internal organ. We learn that on page A3. And this is muscle that's in the walls of our internal organs. So let's identify some uh, uh, internal organs of our body that have visceral muscle. This includes our alimentary canal. Alimentary canal is the name for your food tube, your whole intestinal tract. So in the wall of your esophagus, in the wall of your stomach, in the wall of your small intestine, in the wall of your large intestine, that's all the alimentary canal there is visceral smooth muscle that contracts, creating these peristaltic contractions, peristaltic waves. There's also visceral smooth muscle in the walls of blood vessels. The blood vessels are capable of constricting or dilating. Now, if you've uh, watched the video on the skin, on the integument, I talk about this on page F1, F1. So we mentioned that the blood vessels in our skin can constrict or dilate, and that, that affects the amount of blood flowing through uh, our skin, and that is used to adjust heat loss from our body. But all blood vessels can constrict or dilate. So when they are wide, we say they are dilated. When they narrow, they constrict. When they constrict, that reduces the flow of blood going through that vessel. When they dilate, that increases the flow of blood. How, what allows the vessel to get narrower or wider is the muscle in the wall of the vessel contracting or relaxing. So that's visceral smooth muscle or vascular muscle. Not only is there visceral smooth muscle in the wall of a blood vessel that it can, allows it to uh, be dilated or constricted, there's also visceral smooth muscle in the walls of our airways, our bronchioles. Bronchioles are airways. So the, uh, our airways can be dilated, or they too can narrow and become constricted. So incidentally, when blood vessels dilate or constrict, that's called vasodilation or vasoconstriction. When airways, bronchioles dilate or constrict, that's called bronchodilation and bronchoconstriction. An example of this idea is the whole problem in bronchial asthma. In people with bronchial asthma, their airways constrict. And the kind of medication they inhale are drugs called bronchodilators that dilate those airways to make them white and improve airflow. There's also visceral smooth muscle in the walls of our urinary bladder. Our urinary bladder contracts and pushes the urine out. Uh, there's also visceral smooth muscle in the wall of the uterus, in the myometrium, the muscular outer layer uh, of the uterus, there is visceral smooth muscle. Its purpose is to contract during childbirth, to push the baby out. It creates labor contractions. Sometimes the visceral smooth muscle in the uterus contracts, not when a woman is uh, in, uh, giving birth, but it just contracts for no reason. That's called uterine cramping, right? It causes pain. There's also visceral smooth muscle in the iris of the eye. So what's the iris of the eye? So here I drew an extraordinary picture. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, so here's an eye. Now, we know the black spot in the center of the eye is called the pupil. And that black spot is actually a hole. It's actually a hole through which the rays of light go through into your eye. The, the pigmented area around the pupil is called the iris. It may be pigmented blue, or brown, or green, or hazel. And it's really a muscle. The iris is a muscle. 
and it is actually made up of muscle cells that are arranged largely looking like the petals of a flower. So the, this is the way the muscle cells are arranged in the iris, kind of radially, like spokes of a wheel. And when the muscle, the iris muscle, contracts, when the muscle cells get smaller, that makes the pupil get wider. So contraction of the, pup uh, of the iris leads to pupillary dilation. The pupil gets wider because the iris muscle contracts. And that's, uh, I wrote that also right here. When the iris contracts, we get pupillary dilation. In which case are your, is the iris muscle working? When your pupil is dilated or when it's constricted? When is it working? When it's dilated, mostly when it's dilated. The muscle contracts to dilate the pupil. So the relaxed state is the pupil gets small. So that's the iris uh, muscle. Also, the erector pili muscles in the skin. If you've watched the video on the skin, so uh, you know that there's a muscle in the skin called the erector pili muscle that does what? For those of you who've watched the video. Good. It erects the hair. Pili means hair. A depilatory is something that removes hair. So uh, this muscle in your skin causes the hairs to stand up, creating this goose bump or goose pimple effect, which commonly happens when we're either cold or frightened. All of that is covered in the video on the skin. We, we've been mentioning uh, where visceral smooth muscle is found in the body. Those are just some of the places. Now, what does the visceral smooth muscle cells look like? This is a picture of visceral smooth muscle. And notice that uh, they're just small, simple cells with one nucleus in each cell, and they do not exhibit prominent striations. This is in contrast to skeletal muscle. Incidentally, at the bottom of this page, so I drew this picture, and you can see it on my video, but uh, anyhow, here's this picture. And I've tried to, and it's in your lab manual. I try to draw the relative difference in sizes between the three types of muscle cells. If this is a skeletal muscle cell, which are really big, striated, multinucleated, this is a visceral smooth muscle cell, much smaller. One nucleus, like most normal cells, no obvious striations. So they are much smaller cells. This is a cardiac muscle cell. Cardiac muscle cells are a little bit bigger than visceral smooth muscle cells, but still much smaller than a skeletal muscle cell. And they have one nucleus in each cell, like most normal cells. But they do have some uh, lines or striations. We've got pictures of it right here that shows that. And so here's visceral smooth muscle cells. They are much smaller than skeletal muscle cells. Uh, no striations. Now, the way we usually find visceral smooth muscle cells is they're kind of organized like this. Here's a visceral smooth muscle cell, here's one, here's one. And uh, that's what it shows right here. So they're kind of packed together. And in visceral smooth muscle cells, in this tissue, where one visceral smooth muscle cell contacts, let me do that better. Yeah, that's better. Where one contacts another one, there is an area called an intercalated disc or gap junction. The purpose of the intercalated disc or gap junction is to allow that electrical current called an action potential, which involves the flow of sodium ions. It allows this action potential to spread from one visceral smooth muscle cell to the next one to the next one. So in visceral smooth muscle, the action potential appears to travel from one cell to the next. Now, that's the order in which they contract it. So if the action potential is moving through this cell, we've learned the action potential is going to lead to contraction. So first this cell contracts, then the action potential is traveling here, then this cell contracts, then the action potential is traveling here, then it contracts. This creates a phenomenon called a peristaltic contraction or a peristaltic wave. 
because the, if the, the visceral smooth muscle, for example, in the wall of your digestive tract, your intestine, is organized this way, so the, it creates a peristaltic wave, a contractile wave. It begins uh, at the upper part of the digestive tract, and it pushes downwards. And that's what pushes the food from the mouth end of your alimentary canal to the anal end, is this peristaltic wave, this contraction that creates this pushing motion. That's called a peristaltic wave. Now, unlike skeletal muscle cells, visceral smooth muscle is innervated by autonomic motor neurons. And as we learn on page F1, autonomic motor neurons, and the word autonomic kind of sounds like automatic, they work <laughs> automatically. Bless you. They are not under voluntary control. So here it shows an autonomic motor neuron innervating the visceral smooth muscle, and it automatically, this is a, set, a command coming from your brain, and it goes to, from the autonomic motor neuron, and it automatically commands uh, action potentials and contractions in this visceral smooth muscle of your intestine, of your stomach, of the uterus, of the uh, blood vessels, and so on. We don't have voluntary control over autonomic motor neurons. Therefore, we don't have voluntary control of peristaltic contractions in our intestine. We don't have voluntary control of the uterus. We don't have voluntary control of visceral organs. So let's look at cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is more like visceral smooth muscle than skeletal muscle. The, the uh, cells are like typical cells where there's just one nucleus in each cell. The cardiac muscle cells are electrically joined to one another by intercalated discs or gap junctions. So just as in the, as in the case of the visceral smooth muscle, the action potential can spread from one cardiac muscle, obviously cardiac means heart, from one heart muscle or cardiac muscle cell to the next. And because the uh, action potential spreads from one heart muscle cell to the next, it contracts like a contractile wave. So first this cell contracts, then this cell contracts, then that cell contracts, just like in visceral smooth muscle. So that creates a kind of peristaltic contraction in your heart, a pushing motion. Cardiac muscle uh, does exhibit uh, striations in that respect that's like skeletal muscle, but the striations are not as prominent. They are lighter in appearance than they are in skeletal muscle. That's why skeletal muscle is called striated muscle because of the prominence of the striations or lines. Cardiac muscle, like visceral smooth muscle, is innervated by autonomic motor neurons. We do not have any voluntary control over our heart at all. But our brain is controlling our heart rate, but it's doing it subconsciously, involuntarily, via the autonomic motor neurons. So we have spoken of uh, the three categories of muscle tissue, skeletal muscle, visceral smooth muscle in the walls of our internal organs, and cardiac muscle, which is found in the heart.